So good morning, everybody, and um, welcome to this session, Three Steps to Become um, a Performance Management Expert. This is all about the virtual world that you, we've joined up because of the challenges of virtual performance management. Now, for those of you who don't um, know me, I'm Hedda Bird. Um, you can see my photo, um, my picture, if you've got your um, screen organized to see the speaker. Um, I'm a fellow of the Chartered Institute for um, People and Development. Um, I have got an MBA, but I started my career with um, a mathematics degree and I'm actually a mathematician by training. I then went and worked in the theatre where I spent quite a lot of time um, working on plays about maths and science for young people before I went into the paper industry, did lots of analytics and marketing, and then um, some years ago moved into learning and development. And I and my colleagues here at 3C, um, Helen, my business partner, and our many associates, what we found when we went out doing our broad learning and development activities is that if people don't know what's expected of them, if they don't get feedback on how well they're doing, and if they're not held account for their behavior, then most of the training that we were doing was actually not really going to do much more than tick a box. And we felt it was really important to tackle all these aspects of performance management properly. So what we found is that you can buy appraisal training from 10,000 suppliers of management development. You can buy how to write an appraisal form probably from 5,000 HR consultants, but nobody is sitting back thinking, why are we managing performance? What do we want out of it? What are these processes meant to achieve? So that is what we set out our stall to do. And very briefly, um, so you can see this, these are the kinds of people that we've worked with. Um, just to give a bit of background for those of you, typically we work with organisations where our managers have been promoted because of their technical, professional or academic expertise and not because they're great people managers. So what we have aimed to do is to help these organisations reframe and rethink performance management so that it creates value for the organisation, for managers and leaders and for individuals. So let's move on um, onto our agenda for today. And as I said, for those of you who've only just joined us, um, we're going to have the presentation until about half past 12. Um, then I will switch off the recording um, and then we will move into having a QA, and a um, at which point you can be um, unmute and um, switch your cameras on if you want to. So. Here's the agenda that we promised you. First of all, we're going to have a think about what's different and what's the same with those of you managing vi virtual and hybrid um, issue teams in a performance management context. And what we're talking about in terms of hybrid is people who've got some people who are remote, maybe at home, some people who may be on other sites and some people who might be with them now. And that's leading to quite a different mix of how people um, engage with each other. We're then going to share three practical steps that you can take um, right now as HR, OD, L&D professionals, three steps that you can take with your colleagues to help tackle some of the performance management um, challenges you've got right now. And then we're going to think about future transformation. So we are assuming here that most of you are going to want to pick this material up and take it back to share with your organizations. So that's the frame within which they're thinking. OK, so the first thing to think about is that um, virtual performance management is not what you did last year, plus a bit of a video conference. Right. And if any of your managers are thinking that, um, oh, just a minute, the performance conversation is just the same. Um, I've just got to do it over the video. For many of them, I think they would have misunderstood the vast change that's happened this year. And I'm assuming that because you've joined this programme, you are one of the organisations that have faced an enormous amount of change, um, perhaps imposed on you um, through the COVID pandemic and through the changes in ways of working, or maybe imposed for some other reason. So the first thing is, it's not just about technology. And actually, I'm not going to talk about technology today because you can get loads and loads of technology support from many, many sources. What I'm instead going to ask us to think about is to think differently. And I found this quite an interesting quote. It's from Deanna Mulligan, who's some um, chief exec of Guardian Insurance. And she's just about to publish a book called Hire Purpose um, with a pun on the word hire. She's particularly talking about um, recruiting and retaining people. And what she is saying um, about the way in which we need to work now is that 
we need to be thinking about recruiting, hiring and training people based on their skills and not on their tasks. So it's all about skill description, not job description. And where this rings huge bells and resonates with me is that too often we are managing performance around tasks and not managing performance around the application of skills and strengths to the challenges at hand. And why does this matter? This really matters because most of us are not in straightforward task oriented environments. And I suspect if you if people were, they wouldn't be here. We're mostly in um, broad knowledge working problem solving environments, whether that's how to deal with a customer walking into a shop or whether that's how to redesign the way in which um, an entire corporate world does its banking. What, whatever it is, we need people to be applying their skills and their strengths to their work and not going through, have you done X, have you done Y? So what does this mean for how we're gonna think about managing performance going forward? Let's look first at what's changed. All right, now I'm not gonna read this list. I mean, you could, you'll get the slides afterwards if you've given us your email addresses, um, but there are some key points here. The main point is that you may have people in the same team who've had completely different experiences of it. So some people in a team may have had a massive opportunity to step up, may have hugely increased their opportunity and their responsibility, what they've done. It may have been very challenging and very demanding, but they'll have grown and developed enormously in the year. Whereas it may be that a colleague on that team has been having Groundhog Day for a whole year, just trying to get through the same task that's become more difficult to do because of the work situation um, and nothing's changing and they're feeling like um, all their career opportunities have gone and they've been left behind and the world has stopped outside their door. In addition, as I'm sure you know, um, we've all experienced these new ways of working very differently. Um, whether we've got children at home or not, um, whether we are still actually going to an office ourselves or not, and what these four, three things have added up to that we've seen is a huge decrease in emotional stability. And those of you who know your um, factors of um, behavior in performance will know that emotional stability is the second most important factor in individual high performance. And that people who are emotionally stable tend to perform more highly. And the very nature of COVID has damaged that. So we're going to give you a tool to help you think about and address that challenge. And then what we've seen is very uneven impact on productivity and performance with some people in some departments, in some organizations making enormous productivity gains, while other people, sometimes in the same department, but doing different roles, have had a real struggle with even keeping up with the productivity levels they had before, sometimes because of their work situation, but often because of the nature of the work. But quite a lot has stayed the same. So what has stayed the same? The most basic thing is that all of the people still want to know three core things. What is actually expected of them? How well are they doing? And frankly, what's going on? You know, they may get loads and loads and loads of corporate communications if you've got a highly communicating organization behind you, but they're still wondering, am I going to be moved on when this is over? Is the organization going to reshape? What, what is it going to be? And that means that they're still asking themselves these same questions. Am I wanted? Am I needed? And, and what's the opportunity for me here? So in amongst all the change, there's a lot of stuff that's still the same. And your managers really, really need to understand that. And then finally, what's the so what out of that? We see that there are three things in the so what that really matter. First of all, that people need to explore the emotional roller coaster. Um, that in the context of the performance management conversation, whatever that is, whether you're at annual review time, whether you're at a check-in time, whether you're at the mid-year review, depending on your year, people really, really need to explore that emotional roller coaster. Then they need to focus on skills as opposed to goals. Many organizations cannot set goals at the moment for a whole year. They don't know what the whole year is going to be like. So we need to focus on how can we get them to address that, use their skills to move forward. And then lastly, oops, going, having a slower back here. I'm going to go back one. My machine is working slightly slowly here. Let me go back. 
Oh, we shot through all of those. The last thing we're going to do is use uncertainty to create some fresh thinking. So what's changed? What's the same? So what? We absolutely suggest that you prepare this, a version of this for all your managers who are having to lead performance management at the moment. OK, let us now move on to the next slide. So how do we explore the emotional roller coaster? Here's one of my first tips, and that is that use a visual model to have the discussion. And I have put here a version of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I'm making an assumption that most of you know the core theory. If you don't, do contact me afterwards. Happy to share it with you. You can look it up. Um, the, pub, the papers were published, believe it or not, I think right back in the 1960s and early 70s. It's about how we fit in and how we belong and how that motivates us. So in today's environment, the people at the bottom of the pile at work are those who are literally worried, can they get their job done today? Have they got broadband connection? Are the kids going to come home from school before they finished? Are they able to talk to the people that they need to talk to? If your managers and your staff are worrying about can they literally do today their job, they're not motivated to do anything else. But then, of course, they want to know broadly what's expected of them, especially if things are changing very fast. How is that going to affect them? And then this whole thing around belonging. Am I still needed? Am I valued? And finally, can I grow? And so what we recommend that you do is that you share this, maybe adapted into your own language, with your managers and just take them through it and help them think about where they are and where their people are and then encourage them to share this model with their team. And we recommend they share it with their team as a whole and then um, have individual conversations with people in their performance conversation. And what we're seeing and what the real challenge is, is that people are going up and down this hierarchy like a yo-yo at the moment. Whereas in normal times, people tend to be fairly steady and move up and down it fairly slowly and it takes quite a major event to move them. At the moment, it only takes them to think that um, someone in the house has got COVID or it only takes them to hear that the, um, the company is not sure what world is going to look like when they all come back to the office and are they coming back to the office or not? And everybody's back down um, in, in the very bottom layer. At the same time, somebody might suddenly be asked to take on a new project and they leap right up to the top without going through any of the intervening stages. So we recommend that this tool is used as a very simple model to open up the performance conversation, to start the questions on where are people um, and how are they feeling? And then the next thing that I encourage them to do is to work on a confidence that's about a conversation that's about skills and strengths rather than about um, tasks and what have they done and what have they achieved. So to do that, um, we recommend three simple questions, which again, we um, suggest that you share with your managers and that your managers use these questions with people. So um, essentially asking them to do some reflective self-learning. So what have been the skills that have really helped the individual in the last year? What have they relied on? What have they developed? What were the skills that actually helped them out of all the skills they had? And conversely, have they got some skills they really value, but they think they're rusting away? You know, perhaps you've got somebody whose prime job is standing up in front of a group of people and somehow doing it virtually has not cut it for them. Um, have they got skills that they feel are rusting away? And then similarly, ask them to think about their strengths which of their personal strengths has really helped them get through the year? You know, maybe there's somebody um, who's self-disciplined about exercise and that's helped them. Maybe there's somebody who's developed themselves a great sense of humour. Whatever it is, what are the skills and the strengths that have helped them get through the year? And then crucially, ask your managers to take the element of that conversation and feed it back. And I've given a suggested word pattern. With these skills and strengths, you can be confident in the future because, or you can be confident that you're going to have a role here, or you can be confident that there are going to be opportunities, or you can be confident that we're going to survive this. Whatever it is, even if it's a difficult conversation around there may not be a future for you here, you can still be saying with these skills and strengths, you can be confident that there will be roles for you in other organisations, even if this organisation is having to downsize. So 
very simple, three questions and a piece of feedback so that managers can use this conversation to help people articulate their strengths as an antidote to worry and also to empower their colleagues to use those skills and strengths. Take them away and adapt them to your needs. All right, and then finally, we want to kick start some fresh thinking. And that really requires us, whether we are leaders in HR or leaders in the business, um, to think about what's the prime purpose of performance management right now, all right? What's the thing that we want people to think about over the next um, one to three years? So I don't know what's the prime purpose of the performance conversation, but I'd like you to share um, maybe share this list with your organization. It might be your directorate, it might be a division, it might be a geographical area, it might be the entire organization. What's, what's important, and I put some suggested things up here, you know, is it all about putting in feedback and coaching cultures? Is it about delivering rapid change? You know, is it about retaining people? Is it about downsizing? Whatever it is, ask people to focus on that key driver of business at the moment, whether you are public or private sector, um, you'll still have one prime purpose. And then communicate that purpose really clearly and ask every colleague to discuss with their manager how they can use their skills and their strengths in relation to the prime purpose. And what we see is that opening up the skills and strengths conversation and addressing it to the prime purpose is where the new thinking comes from, rather than saying, what tasks can you do? What activities can you do? So to get people to step back from what can I do and into how can I apply what I'm bringing to this organization? And it's that change in perspective that will open up some fresh thinking. So I've gone through that quite quickly. Um, let's just step back and have a, a brief recap here. The first thing that we need to do is to explore the emotional roller coaster, right? And you need to help managers have their conversations with people so that the um, emotional context is open in the meeting. And the emotional context obviously leads to motivation and talking about the challenges. Get that on the table first, because otherwise it's an elephant in the room and all the discussions that you have around tasks and goals and activities don't mean anything. And then secondly, share with your managers the very simple questions that will enable them to have a strengths and skills conversation. And be very clear, this conversation is first of all about boosting confidence and then about feeding back to them to help them think forward about the future. And where they're working with um, already skilled and abled people, then this conversation can um, also be about that good to great. So you've done really well. How can you use your skills and strengths to really move forward? Um, what new skills and strengths might you need? So focus on skills and strengths. And then the third time round, we want to set a prime purpose for this round of performance conversations. Now, we are really encouraging people around the prime purpose because performance conversations often end up talking about what you did last year, what you're going to do next year, what are the actual goals we're measuring, what is your career development, what's your learning and development need, what's your long-term career plans, and what's your well-being. Now, what we know is that if you try and talk about all of those things in one meeting, you don't talk about anything properly. And so what we're suggesting is that you focus on prime purpose, you talk about strengths and skills, and you use it to boost confidence in the future. And then if you need to have a conversation around some specific tasks, maybe have that at a separate time. If you need to have a conversation around behaviors, you can build that into your strengths and skills conversation to talk about how behaviors feed into strengths and skills. But try to streamline everything this year. Remember that those virtual conversations can be quite tough. Now, um, last tips, if you have not done our free program online around how to manage conference calls and um, online meetings, we strongly recommend that. It's got lots and lots of hints and tips for how to hold meetings virtually, how to make the most of them, whether they're in groups or in one-to-ones. It's a free program, it's on our website, it's on our Teachable site, and it's on the sign-off to all of my emails and all of my colleagues' emails. So do go ahead and use that. And then we want you to think, all right, we're very much aware now um, that some of you are in um, smaller organizations or even in larger ones thinking, 
we need to be able to sort this stuff out for myself. It's great talking to Heather and getting some hints and tips, and I can get loads of hints and tips, but we absolutely um, need to address this um, at the moment, and I need to build the skills. So these are just small steps that you can take. And as you know, 3C can come in and do bigger projects for you, design and implement performance management, do the training, engage a workforce. But what if that's not an option for you? So here's the thing, we learned how to do this. We were not born knowing how to do all this performance management stuff. We've spent the last 10 years researching, studying, engaging, uh, practicing, um, learning from experience, putting some new tools into action. We learn how to do it and so can you. So what we would like to do, and I'm just losing slightly my um, side set, see if I can get it, here we go, all right. What we'd like to do is invite you to come and learn with us. So for those of you for whom having outside support is not the right solution, you can come and learn. And it may well be that you're in an organization where you expect to have in-house expertise. You may have put an in in-house expertise around change management. You may have put an in in-house expertise around agile working. What we're saying is you can now put in um, some in-house expertise around performance management. So come and learn with us. Come and learn live and online. Um, we're going to run an eight week program culminating in a performance management um, certification. And for those of you who haven't seen the performance management canvas, this is the canvas. These are all the moving parts of performance management. And today we've talked about some small bits of it. We've talked about the immediate part of what's the purpose. We've talked about how can we just get people to focus on that, that one part of the purpose. We've also talked, I'm um, looking over on the other side, um, about the, the motivation. Where are people? How are they feeling now? Um, what, what are they wanting to need? What do they need from you? And then we talked about having the strength and skills conversation, which is part of the, um, the middle bit in the feedback and coaching and performance conversations. But throughout how you think about performance management, there are choices. And in this program, we're going to be looking at all the different choices that you have to design performance management, how you make those choices that will suit your organization and how you develop the skills so that as you move from organization to organization, you will be able um, to make the choices and lead performance management projects in the future. So I'll be leading it. We're going to have weekly um, webinars for everybody where we'll be sharing our tools and techniques, where we will be um, taking you through some of the theory and explaining how we apply it. And then we'll be having some hosted smaller sessions where you can um, talk with us and engage with, the, with each other to actually put into practice some of the techniques um, that we've been sharing with you and that you can learn how to do it for yourself.